We're standing on the uh, side of Egerton Hill here. We've got the area in front of us hemmed on both sides, this big horseshoe. And over to the left there, we've got the cliffs at Burton Bradstock. Dorset is a fantastic place for a landscape photographer. There is so much in such a relatively small area. You don't need to travel far to get beautiful rolling hills, expansive heathlands, incredible differences in landscape. And as for the Jurassic Coast, you know, the World Heritage Site, again, incredible cliffs at Burton Bradstock and that end of, you know, the west side of Dorset. Wonderful, wonderful land and seascapes here, all within short travelling distance. What we've got is this scene in front of us. And what we're going to try and do is make it not look so confusing. The large, wide landscape shot is quite a confusing thing. So by using various compositional techniques. Teaching photography is, is, is good fun. I like passing on knowledge if I possibly can. I've had a lot of help from various people over the years, you know, teaching me and I thought it would be nice to sort of try and give this back in some way. And by looking through the viewfinder, I bring... Trying to get across the, the non-technical bit, the inspirational bits, is actually quite hard because quite often with a location, I'm not sure how I'm going to even approach it myself until I'm there. And this is what I try and put over to, to students as well, you know, try and approach things with an open mind. And what I'm using is the edge of this ridge down in front of me here, which is lit by the sun, to give a base to the picture. From my particular view, if I can't get what I want on the day and there's nothing else, you know, having this open-minded thing, there's nothing else I can see either, then I'll pack up and go home. Sometimes I won't even get the camera out of the bag and it's, it's teaching these people, you know, it's, there's a lot of patience. Can you see the way now? This ridge is so brightly lit, but with a shadow over the bottom of the hill now, it's given us a real brightly lit base to the frame of the photograph. One of the other things I quite like doing is writing poems. I sometimes spend half the time taking a photograph and then sitting there with a notebook writing um, some sort of thoughts down that I can maybe turn into a poem later. This one's called Frost on the Froom. Crystal light on frozen grasses, the froom with dancing mist passes. Rolling on towards the sea, growing old its destiny. But for now, in middle age, trapped in its course and centre stage, a moment in time, its ceaseless endeavour is stopped by the camera, ageing halted forever. Living in a tiny rural village in Dorset is just absolutely wonderful, to be honest with you. It's just an incredible place to be. It's calm, relaxing, it gives me inspiration, it allows me to sit, write my books, uh, the poetry I write with my photographs. The peace and calm is the main overriding thing, the quality of life away from the madding crowd, you know. I mean, I have my internet connection, I have television, I've got all mod cons, but to be able to just switch all that lot off and maybe sit in front of a roaring fire on a cold winter's night reading a book, I can do that. I haven't got traffic roaring past the window to remind me of where I am. It's If I want to switch off from the outside world in my little bubble, I can. I just feel incredible that I might have a sort of place in history. I mean, I look back at the work of Francis Frith who went round documenting England, photographing it and recording it as it was in a bygone era. I just find it incredible and quite humbling that possibly in 50, 100 years time people could be looking at this film back at me having done a similar sort of thing. Just wish I could be around in 100 years to see people's reaction, you know, to this sort of thing. Incredible. It's an amazing feeling. <laughs>